Hey guys, what's up? It's been a while. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. Today we're continuing with our usual of teaching you guys how to fight these bosses. Uh, one of the best things I like about these new Desert Treasure 2 bosses in particular is the fact that they're all pretty much skill dependent and not necessarily gear dependent, um, which I think is fantastic. Because there's a lot of bosses that are kind of gear dependent. Um, which make them kind of unfun because of that, especially for you Iron Man who probably have to spend many hours just trying to get specific types of gear. So this is a breath of fresh air in my opinion. So without further ado, uh, we'll just go over my quick gear real quick. Um, later on in the video, uh, I'll be showcasing a more maxed out type of account on my main or well, this is my main, but <laughs> maxed out more more better gear essentially higher level gear so that way you guys can have an idea of what to work towards so pretty much in almost every guide video i make i'm using full avoid just because it's free it's cheap i am using dragon boots if you don't have dragon boots by now i <laughs> by the time you finish this quest i don't know what you're doing um i'm also wearing the ring of shadows because the ring of shadows basically has the same offensive stats of a brimstone ring which is pretty good for a free ring that you get from a quest we're your best defender your best blessing i'm wearing an amulet glory but obviously if you have a fury or torture wear that instead uh, i have the fire cape on um, and i do recommend the arc light not only is it obviously a free slash weapon uh because the duke is weakest seems to be weakest to slash but the arc light seems pretty effective a bit uh against it if you happen to have a fang or a scythe you can use those instead um uh, but That'll be more towards in the later section of the video where I'll show you uh, some other gear in action and whatnot. Um, if you have a spec weapon, I would recommend a spec weapon, but because this is a cheap budget setup, um, I'm just not going to use a spec weapon, especially to explain the boss fight. Without further ado, let's get started. All right. Now, luckily, Duke Succulus, I think that's how you pronounce his name. I don't know. Uh, he's actually one of the easiest bosses of the four. I'm gonna drop these. You will need some inventory space. It's okay if you drop some stuff like I just did because this is an instance. So things you leave on the ground stay on the ground for a very long time. Um, there are pestle and mortars as well as an iron pickaxe on the wall for you to grab if you didn't bring any with you. I brought mine with me though, so I'm not gonna worry about it. You do have to do this preparation phase that I'm about to show you guys every fight. Uh, which is kind of annoying, but once you get better at it, it's actually not that bad, to be honest. With that being said, that's why I just bring my own. I personally am bringing a dragon pickaxe because there is, you do have to mine some salt here for the preparation phase. And better pickaxes just let you mine the salt a little faster. So that's why I bring mine. You don't have to. If you want to bring more food instead, you could do that instead. I forgot to show you guys, but uh, in terms of supplies, I also brought thralls. Uh, thralls are pretty good for this fight. So let's go ahead and the prep phase. As you can see here, there's like these red beams of light coming from these extremities. They're like these like, I don't know what the heck these guys are, uh, but they do damage you. They do a lot of damage. So do not get hit by them. Um, after post quest, after you, you finish the Desert Treasure 2, these red lights, they'll do like 65 damage each. They're insane. <laughs> so don't get hit by them. Um, these shadows don't get hit by them either. They will stun you. So there's nothing worse than getting stunned right in front of the red beam and then getting hit by a red beam and then you're almost dead if you are if you have 99 hit points um, or more. So it's, it's a lot of damage. As you can see right here, I've kind of marked out the hitbox for what the red beams are. So you can see right there, he did a red beam. This is basically what the hitbox is. So it's actually better to run alongside the wall right next to them on your way to the end where these mushrooms are instead of like against the rail. Um, you're less likely to get hit by the beam. So worth useful little tip. Uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and get our first mushrooms. These are two different types of mushrooms and we do have to get both types. Um, so as you can see right there, I got stunned by one of the shadows. All right, now, because of the fact that I have pretty high stats, I only need to get two mushrooms, but in order for part of this preparation phase, the uh your herb lore matter level does seem to matter so if you're below i think 80 or 90 herb lore you're probably gonna need to pick more mushrooms each so just just throwing that out there so you guys aren't uh you're, you guys are prepared i have got two more from over here you do have to use a pestle mortar on the mushrooms to turn them into like this mush get that get that now that's ready. I'm going to wait for these red lights to finish. These lights always appear in, a, in the same pattern, by the way. So you don't have to worry about 
You don't have to worry about them being off pattern or anything. It's always the same one. It's the middle, the one closest to you, and then one up towards the, the mushrooms. It's always in that order. All right. I'm going to mine some salt here. I always get 12, just same amount as these. All right. Once you have your mushrooms and your salt, go ahead and dump half in the vat, the other half in the other vat. Once it's ready, it'll give you these uh, poison looking things. All right, got those. Now, one thing I want to quick, so you kind of see how I have the a true tile highlighted around these vents. Uh, if you want to set that up, because it is pretty useful, not only because they do it on their own um, during the preparation phase, so you can kind of have a little bit of warning beforehand which ones are going to pop up. It shows their hitbox. You can get hit next to the center of the uh the vent um which is a little, it doesn't always look like it like you would be but you can get hit by it so it just makes it a little easier to showcase if you want to set that up this is how you do it download the plugin better npc highlight go to the true tile section and type in the true tile id 12198 that's the id for it once you type that in and you make sure this is checkboxed uh these will start lighting up for you it makes it a lot easier the boss does have a special attack where he will forcefully make one of the vents or even two of the vents activate so having the true tile kind of helps a little bit it's not necessary but it helps uh i am going to some of my thrall heal thralls are pretty useful against them uh sip my super combat just bring your best combat potion um, make sure that your weapon's on slash because he seems to be weak as a slash. Turn on my spec. Uh, for quick prayers, I have protect for melee and I have piety on. If you don't have piety, just use your best uh, melee prayer instead. Okay, turn on my prayer. You have to use the potions, uh, the poisons on him in order to start the boss fight. So let's use that. There we go. Now he only has a handful of special attacks. This is a standard attack where he like hits the ground. It is worth noting that the spikes themselves don't hurt you. It's the white cloud at the end of the slam that hurts you. Um, and obviously you get nick damage when hiding behind these pillars. This white eyeball, if you're standing within this field of view, when it goes off, you'll take a lot of damage. It can practically one shot you sometimes if, you, if you're not at max health. So I keep that in mind. Right here, that's where he forcefully activates the vent. That's why it's a little helpful to have the true tile uh, plugin on. You don't have, need to. If you have uh, sound cues on, you can act. He actually makes a sound effect when he force when he shoots it out. Um, so that's also helpful as well. I have both on, so I don't normally get hit by that. As soon as you hear it, just run to the other side. You'll normally hear it first before you actually see it. So the sound cue ends up being a little bit better. All right, so let's go ahead and actually, well, fight him. <laughs> it's going to be pretty easy. Let me send my throw up. You kind of just do like this flinch method. Hit him. Hide behind the pillar. Hit him. Hide behind the pillar. You hear the sound effect. Go to the other side. Hit him. Hide behind the pillar. Hit him. Hide behind the pillar. You see that happening. Just hide. Hit him. Hide behind the pillar. It's pretty easy. This is literally one of the easiest uh, boss fights of the four. You hear it, go around the corner. Pretty simple. Now there is like a pseudo cheese method for this as well, where uh, you can combine thralls with a uh, recoil effect from either a ring of recoil or a ring of suffering, um, as well as the boss can be poisoned. So if you have a Serp Helm um, or something to poison him with, having all three sources of damage can stack up to a lot of damage throughout the course of the fight. It's pretty useful. Um, I did it quite a bit at first when fighting him. Um, and I'll probably, and I'll showcase it a little bit in the video too. So, whoops, I exit. See right there at the end where the, the cloud comes up. That's where I got damaged. I'm gonna resound my thrall. This is pretty much it. Nothing crazy. You see how I didn't get hit there because I wasn't there when the white part came up, the cloud. I was standing on top of the spikes, but I wasn't in the cloud so i didn't take damage all right something worth noting is that once he gets under 25 percent of his health bar he does start to speed up he starts becoming like a tick or two faster with his uh basic attack okay so try not to get too caught up in the rhythm 
of what you were doing throughout the most of the fight because he does speed up um that is useful if you're using like a five or six tick weapon you have to wait for him to do a few more uh basic attacks first before you could actually get a hit in so don't be cut off by guard by that so anyway that's it in terms of budget gears really easy fight uh we're gonna go ahead and showcase the more uh higher end gear setup for any of you curious but yeah all right, gear-wise, for all of you mains out there or higher-level uh, Iron Man accounts, this is what I'm rocking with. Um, I'm also utilizing the cheese method just to kind of showcase both at once, but I do have a Serp Helm. The Duke is susceptible to poison, which, honestly, it it helps. It helps quite a lot. It, it racks up a bit of damage over the case of the fight. Granted, the fights are not that long, but when you combine it with, like, Thralls, Poison, and, in this case, the Ring of Suffering for the recoil effect, you actually do a good amount of damage just from passive effects. It's actually kind of nuts. With that being said, just bring your best melee gear. Uh, should be pretty straightforward. I personally like bringing the Blood Fury just in case because it does kind of help heal up um, all the Nick little chip damage that you take through your prayer when hiding behind the pillar at times. Uh, so I personally like that. That's just a personal choice, though. You can bring the Torture if you want as, uh, instead. Um, I'm bringing the Void Waker. Having at least one spec weapon does help out quite a bit in speeding up these kills, um, which means you use less food, which means you can stay here a lot more often, or a lot longer, I mean, uh, for longer kill trips. Void Waker seems to be really good. Um, I was using Claws originally. Claws are actually really good with the Serp Helm because uh, you're more likely to actually trigger the poison effect um, instead of having it started right from the beginning of the fight. But you don't have to. Uh, just use your best spec weapon, whatever, whatever you have for Slash. Uh, with that being said, uh, I also brought a Fang with me. Make sure your Fang is on Slash when fighting the Duke because he, he does seem to be weakest to Slash. Um, Fang seems to be probably one of the better options against this boss. Uh, you can use a, uh, BGS if you want to and combine it with like an arc light if you don't have a Fang. Um, BGS is really good against Duke as well for anything that's not a Fang. Uh, if you don't have a BGS, you can just use an arc light and that's totally fine. So let me go ahead and do a kill real quick using the cheese methods, just so you can kind of see how quick, how much the passive damage actually adds up. It's actually pretty nice, to be honest. I highly recommend it. Uh, I'm gonna drop off these anglers real quick. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start the fight. I'm gonna summon my thrall, go to my void waker, get my spec ready. I'm going to divine super combat. Use my potions. Pick up my English fish. And let's go to town. Speck him. Okay, I stood out of the way. <laughs> stood there a little too long. And now we just need to flinch. <clears throat> take a, just try to take a look at uh, the passive damage that is done to him. It's a lot of nice free damage just passively. See how the recoil effect's actually really nice here? Because I'm always getting uh, chip damage when hiding behind this pillar. So you always guarantee damage every few ticks. Whoops. And there we go. As you guys could probably tell, the, the, the passive damage... Although individually it's not a lot, they, they do stack and like <laughs> it adds up throughout the fight. Helps make it a little easier for you, uh, for anybody who would like to do something like that. Uh, if you don't want to use a ring or roy recoil, you can just use a light bear as well. That will obviously help with your spec weapon. As you can see, I'm only at like 40 special attack at the end of that fight. So I won't be able to use my void waker right away. Just use whatever, whichever one you prefer. Both are pretty good in my opinion so anyways i hope you guys enjoyed the video hope that was helpful if you did find it helpful maybe leave a like on the video um or even maybe post some tips in the comics uh i know i would appreciate it and anybody else watching this would appreciate it so without further ado uh, i am working on guys for the other bosses as well from desert treasure 2 so stay tuned for that without further ado though my name is brian and i will see you guys in the next video peace